Hello students. Uh, we are starting with chapter number one of module number six. The name of the chapter is Numerical Solutions of Transcendental and Linear Equations. Before we start the chapter, you need to understand the two types of equations that we will be solving here. One is algebraic equations and the other is transcendental. So when I say algebraic equation, let's understand this with the help of an example. Say I have x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus root 5 equal to 0. Or I have x, y, z square equal to 1 over z minus root x. Okay. Any equations, any equations which consist only of variables and uh, numbers and operations between them will be termed as algebraic okay and if i talk about transcendental equations now i'll have say x cube sin x minus one upon log x okay equal to five so what's the difference here as you can observe we just don't really have variables and number we also have special functions okay we have special functions like you can have exponential you can have logarithm you can have cosine you can have tan things like that okay so i may have e raised to 5x is equal to 1 over x any such equations any such equations they are all termed as transcendental so the chapter is going to deal with okay and uh, the chapter is divided basically into two parts. The second half is what I am starting with first. It is a solution of linear system of equations. Now, when we talk about this particular part, uh, as per your syllabus, this part is divided again into two different methods. <laughs> Sorry. The two methods included in your syllabus are Gauss Jacobi's. And Gauss Seidel. Okay, this lecture is going to be about Gauss Jacobi's like solution. Okay, so Gauss Jacobi's method. Before we start with the method, few things to remember, specifically for this particular method, and otherwise also for any uh, numerical methods. The entire chapter is about numerical methods. Few things which are common to all methods. First thing, you will always fix your calculator. You will always fix the calculator to four decimals. Okay. Now, how to do that? I'll just show you here. I have a ES calculator with me. I've done some calculations in it. Okay. Uh, you might be having a CW or whichever other calculator. So, in the ES calculator, you go to shift mode. Just a second, let me come out of this. Okay, shift mode. As I go to shift mode, I see option number six is fix. Because I have to fix it to four decimals, I'll press four there, and my answers will be all fixed up to four places. Okay, I'll just show you an example. So if I put 1.025697, any numbers, any numbers, I've put more than four decimals, right? When I press equal to, my answer will always be in four decimals automatically rounded and given to me so that's what fixed us so numerical methods entire chapter you will fix your calculator to decimal four whichever method you are doing second thing if you are doing sums based on sine cosine tan etc unless it is not mentioned set your calculator in radian mode Okay, set your calculator in radian mode. Uh, let me show you again here. I think, no, not in mode. I go to shift mode. You'll have option number four here as radian. And, uh, okay, I don't have an option of zooming in. But just on the screen, there is an R which is visible there. Okay, and that R tells me that my calculator is in radian okay 
so that is the second thing now coming specifically to gauss uh, jacobi's method what you need to remember is your question should be diagonal dominant question should be diagonal dominant now what is diagonal dominant and what if a question is not diagonal dominant what to do we'll understand with the help of an example okay so let's understand the method with the help of an example <laughs> the question is solve using gauss jacobi's method and the question limits you to three iterations the question limits you to three iterations now let's look at the question here i have 20x plus y minus 2z equals to 17 3x plus 20y minus z equal to minus 18 and 2x minus 3y plus 20z it should be not x okay so that's the typing error yeah equals to 25 fine now once i get this what if i write this in a matrix format i'll get 20 1 minus 2 i'll get a 3 a 20 and a minus 1 I get a 2, a negative 3, and a 20. Now observe, everywhere in the diagonal, okay, the number may not be same. Here it is same, it is 20, always it may not be same. But the number in each row, the largest number is coming at the position 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Like for, for the first row, uh, we have the largest value at 1, 1 position for the second row you have the largest value at 2 2 position and for the third row you have the largest value at 3 3 position what to do if these values are not at that place okay what to, what to do this is called diagonal dominant this is diagonal dominant okay so what will you do if your given matrix is not diagonal dominant you just simply have to shift the rows you'll have to do row exchange Okay, so equation 2 and equation 1 may get exchanged or whichever is applicable. So that we will understand with the help of the next example. I hope this is clear that this example is already in the diagonal dominant. Now once the diagonal dominant form is clear, uh, we don't require the matrix here. So I am going to erase that matrix part from here. Okay, once the do diagonal dominant part is clear, let's understand how to solve using gauss jacobis method. So my first equation is diagonal dominant in x means the value of x is the largest. From the first equation, I'll write that x is equal to 17 minus y plus 2z divided by 20. From the second equation where 20 is again the largest value in the entire equation and that is attached to y, I'll write y is negative 18 minus 3x plus z divided by 20 and the last equation z is equal to because again 20 is the largest and attached to z <coughs> 25 minus 2x plus 3y divided by 20 i hope this is clear so this is your these are your equations we'll be calling them as equation star all your calculations will be based on equation star. Equation star is formed only after your question is in diagonal dominant form. Okay. So, we'll start with the first iteration or the initial iteration. Iterations are nothing but approximations. Okay. And every time you approximate, you try to improvise. You try to make it a better answer. So you always start with x is 0, y is 0, and z is 0. This is when you start with Gauss Jacobi's. So whenever you start with Gauss Jacobi's method, you will start with x, y, z. How many ever variables are there? All zeros. So now observe if I put x, y, and z as 0, I'll get the first value of x is 17 over 20. My value of y is negative 18 over 20. And my value of z is 25 over 20. We'll calculate it in decimals. So I have 17 divided by 20. And in the decimal, it's going to be 0 0.8500. You can see it's always giving me the answer in four decimals, okay? Because I've fixed it into four decimals. Second is negative 18 divided by 
20 that's giving me 0 0.9000 and I think it was negative z is 25 divided by 20 of course you can do it orally also simple numbers so that gives me as 1.25 okay now for the second iteration I'll put these values whatever values of x y and z I have got it I'll put these values in equation style. So this time, okay, this was I put in equation star. I put these values in equation star first. And now I'm putting these values, that is 0 0.85, y is 0 0.9, and z is 1.25 in equation star. Okay, so let's see. Okay, uh, so let's do the calculation using calculator directly. So my equation star x is equal to 17 minus y. Uh, y is negative over here. Okay. So y is negative. So negative 0 0.9 to be added. I'm putting it in the bracket. Okay, decimal. Yeah. So negative 0 0.9 plus 2 times z, z value was 1.25. Okay, and I need a entire denominator 20, so I'll keep these things in bracket. And now whole upon 20. Okay, so again as d, I get a 1.02. x is one point. 02 or 1.0200. 0, 0. Same way, let's calculate y here. To calculate y, I am pressing SE not AC not on. Okay, observe that. You'll understand this a little later. Negative 18 minus 3 times x, that's 0 0.85. Okay, it's 3 times, so I should have a multiplication here. And a bracket here. Okay, plus z, I'm taking the equation from star, okay, the value of y. So z is 1.25. Let's close the bracket and the entire thing divided by 20 again. The answer in decibels is negative 0 0.9650. Let's calculate z again from equation star. I'm pressing AC again. So 25 minus 2 times 1.02, you may write the 0, 0, or you may skip that, plus 3 times, because there's a negative number, I'm putting a bracket, 0 0.965, closing the previous bracket as well, the entire thing divided by 20. Okay, some error in the input. I think I did not open the bracket. So now, in decimal form, it's 1.0033. Okay. So, now, for the third iteration, I'll put again these values in equation star. So, when I do that, what is going to happen is, I'll keep repeated values. I'll just show you these are some values which I have already calculated. And uh, you'll find, okay, uh, this should not be the first iteration. This is just the initial one. So this is the zeroth iteration, the initial one. This was the first. This was the second. You are expected to find three iterations. So you will get the third here and fourth and fifth. Okay, you can check the values. Now, why did I do it till five iterations? Not all questions will ask you to, you know, stop up to three iterations. Observe that the values are becoming very, very close and they are not, uh, you know, different. And that's when you stop the iteration if the number of iterations is not mentioned. Okay. So, this one question I'm leaving at as your homework. I want you guys to try that question. I hope the method is absolutely clear with all of you. Thank you.